Hey guys, it is Patrick here and I wanted you to know before you dive right into this accounting information systems lesson that the accompanied worksheet is available for download if you head to my website at www.patricklymsa.com or I'll leave the link directly to that worksheet down in the description below. Click on that, download the worksheet and print it out and that way you can follow along the accounting information systems lecture that I'm about to teach. So it has all the notes that I'm going to be going over. All you need to do is write your notes and fill in those blanks. So make sure you do that. And here is your AIS lesson. All right, in this lesson, we are going to be talking about the different types of business processes that a organization may have. Now, as we talk about these different business processes, these are just some of the most common. Different organizations might have more than this. Different organizations might have less of this, but these are the most common when we look at an organization. So let's take a look at some of the types of business processes or also known as transaction process so or transaction cycles. So let's get started here. Uh, five basic business process. So within an organization, there are basically five basic business process or transaction cycles in which transaction exchanges can occur. The five that we're going to be looking at in this lesson specifically is the revenue cycle, the expenditure cycle, the production or conversion cycle, the human resources or payroll cycle, as well as the financing cycle. So remember that these are all business processes and within each business processes we have activities and tasks that have to happen that are inter interrelated interconnected to one another so we've got all of these tasks and we consider that the revenue cycle we've got all of these activities and tasks that is the expenditure cycle now the reason why we're breaking them up that way is because these transactions are very much related and they're very much in some respects, very redundant. So, you know, what transactions, activities that we do in the revenue cycle is pretty much what we always do all the time. Expenditure cycle, kind of the same way that we do things to pay our vendors, we're gonna do it the same exact way every single time. So we've got these different business cycles and within these business cycles, we do these interrelated, interconnected activities or tasks. So let's talk about each one of them. Some of them are very self-explanatory, but we'll walk you through each one of them and then show you a map of how all of these actually work together at the end of the day. So let's start off with our revenue cycle. This relates to goods or services being sold for cash or a future promise to pay. So these would be all the activities in order to accomplish this intermediate goal. So our goal is to sell product to our customers and collect cash to generate a profit. So what activities are associated with this business cycle? This is an important business cycle, but what activities would be important in that business cycle? That will, that's what we would call the revenue cycle. We also have our expenditure cycle. This relates to purchases of inventory for resale or raw materials to use in the production, in producing products in exchange for cash or a future promise to pay. So generally speaking, most of our expenditures are going to be inventory based if we are an inventory um, type company. Uh, if we are services, maybe they're not gonna come out of this expenditure cycle. We have another cycle that labor comes out of really. Um, but it, all of those types of expenditures that we have that would come out of this cycle, all of those tasks or activities that are related to that would be put in this cycle. We also have the production, the conversion cycle. This is usually, um, uh, usually only for manufacturing type customers or manufacturing type clients, actually manufacturing type organizations. There we go. Manufacturing type organizations because they're the ones that are actually going to convert a raw material into a finished good. So this occurs in manufacturing organizations, but not restricted them exclusively. There may be situations where we have this for other industries in which raw materials are transformed into finished goods. So, you know, that in itself is its own cycle because there's a lot to that. We've got to take raw materials. We got to bring in raw materials. 
then take the raw materials, put it into work in process. Then once we get into work in process, then we need to put it into finished goods. That whole process also needs uh, how much labor are we gonna need to acquire? How much raw materials are we gonna need to um, acquire? So we've got a lot there. And so that's gonna be its own little cycle there because that is its individual business process at the end of the day. We also have the human resources or the payroll cycle. This is where all labor, regardless if labor is operational, if it's manufacturing, if it's um, cost of goods sold related, whatever it is, all labor comes out of here. So relates to human capital where employees are hired, trained, compensated, evaluated, promoted, and terminated. So if you think about expenditure cycle, you would go, well, compensation is an expenditure. Why isn't that in there? Well, this is a very specific to employees, right? Employees a little bit more complex than paying for supplies. Paying for supplies, it's pretty easy to do that. Paying for labor um, and managing labor is a little bit more difficult. So we've got its own little cycle for that and payroll itself is pretty complicated. So um, it needs its own little thing because it's not just easy as cutting a check to an employee. You've got a lot of deductions, you've got a lot of calculations that have to happen in order for it to be appropriate or not appropriate, but needs to be accurate to what the employee is supposed to get at the end of the day. Then we have our financing cycle. This occurs when the company sells shares in the company to investors and borrows money and where investors are paid dividends and interest is paid on loans. So a lot of that is what I like to call cash management. So it is financing cycle, but this is really where cash management occurs. Specifically, this is external sources of cash management. So specifically, we're looking at uh, selling security, so stock um, in the company, as well as uh, issuing debt. So, you know, borrowing money, that would be a cash management issue. So that's what we would do in the financing section. Now, how does all of these, so those are all the activities that would be associated with the financing cycle. So we've got five different business processes. And again, the job of these different business processes is to attain its own goals and those specific goals help the organization as a whole to grow. So let's take a look at how all five of these business processes or transaction cycles actually work together within an accounting information system. So we've got all of our cycles here. We've got, you know, the expenditure cycle, we've got the financing cycle, we've got the pay, uh, human resources and payroll cycle, we've got the revenue cycle, and then we've got the production cycle. So we've got five cycles. And again, some companies might have more, some might have less. Then we have our general ledger and reporting system. So we've got all of these different cycles doing their own thing kind of and, and really they're like their own department so we've got all of doing their own thing and you got to remember that these are all interconnected they're interconnected to the organization as a whole each one of them is going to have data and that data is going to shift right into that general ledger system and that reporting system because we're going to have to deal with checks that have to be cut cash that has to be collected, um, possible POs that have to be issued, uh, receiving reports that have to be received and attached to voucher packages. So there's a lot going on here and all of them are going to have some type of data that has to feed right into this general ledger system. Now going beyond that, we do have, you know, if we have a production, we have a manufacturing type of organization, we're going to have to get or obtain raw material. So we're going to buy that through the expenditure cycle, but then we're going to have to bring it in through our production cycle in order to actually produce something or manufacturing manufacture something for our organization as finished goods. We also may need labor. So we're gonna get labor from the human resources cycle or the payroll cycle, right? We said all labor is gonna be housed there. So we've got the raw materials, we've got the labor, that's gonna give us our finished goods. Now, what about if we're not a manufacturer? What about if we're a retailer? If we're a retailer, we might not have raw materials or labor. Instead, we might just go ahead and buy inventory or purchase goods from the expenditure cycle. That leads us into selling them in the revenue cycle. Once we take care of uh, you know purchasing goods, all of this, well not all of it, but the you know expenditure cycle and revenue cycle has to do with cash, right? So we're gonna need funds to be able to make all of these cycles work. So we're gonna get funds from, let's just say the revenue cycle. Um, we may get some funds through the uh, financing cycle and then those funds need to go to pay for employees and pay for expenses. And so you see the green arrows that kind of go to where funds need to go to or where they're coming 
from um, at the end of the day. Now, all of this business cycle, so at the organizational level, all that information gets summarized and then gets sent out to um, decision makers in the form of external or internal users. So we've got that purple line here over here, if you didn't see that, that all this information gets summarized and then we send that out to uh, users who needed to actually make decisions at the end of the day. So again, you know, transaction cycles are very important in how we look at accounting information systems because the tasks that are very unique to each cycle are very unique and different to, uh, from one another. In addition, we want to make sure that they're all interconnected. So that interconnectedness means that they're actually working together to achieve the goals of the organization. At the end of the day, all that data is summarized into the general ledger system, and that information is sent out to the decision makers of the organization. So that is a look at the different types of business processes. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you're looking for the next lesson, make sure you hit up that lesson right over here. And if you are looking for the entire accounting information systems course, make sure you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com where I have the full AIS course available to you. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video.